Good afternoon YouTube, my name is Brandon. We've got a fabrication project to do today, so stick around. If you guys have been following along with this series, you'll know that I just recently talked to you guys about how I've been going to yard sales lately, and I, I'm kind of like addicted to it. I don't know what's going on. I picked up these uh, nice files recently that were on a lawn sale, paid $2 for them. Let me show you what I got. So here it is guys. I've got a Craftsman two bagger setup that'll go right onto that tractor. Now, listen to the deal here. So my wife and I were driving around and we came up, it was a, I think on a Saturday or a Sunday, and we went by a yard sale and it was towards later in the day, maybe around six o'clock, and there was a sign up and it said free. All of this stuff was sitting there at the free pile. <laughs> How awesome is this? The only thing I have to do is we're gonna have to fabricate a bracket right here that connects there, to, you know, somewhere, somewhere in there. How awesome is that? I mean, I, I needed this piece. You can see right here, uh, when I got this tractor, it didn't have that discharge chute. And I've been looking around for one online and I actually found a guy who had one and I was gonna pay like 20 bucks for that chute. So it's just awesome. That's why you guys need to just go around and do some of this yard sale and stuff. It's so much fun. Let's get back to it. All right, we're at the back of the tractor. What I'm thinking about doing is, is I want to install like a receiver hitch, like you'd have on your vehicle, so I could put in, you know, just a standard tow hitch or any other accessory that would fit within a regular receiver hitch that you'd have on your vehicle. And I'm also thinking that I will weld a mount onto that bagger mount that I just showed you that'll also slip into that and then it will just attach in with a pin but I don't want it permanent onto this. So what I'm thinking about doing is attaching it to that existing pin there, maybe having it come down and attach to there or there or something along those lines. Have it hang off that pin right there, also attaching on that side. Then the receiver somehow connects into here. So if you ever had to get into this, you could just remove this mount, then the tractor's right back to the where it was right now. We have a spare receiver hitch that I can use to cut up. Let me bring you over and show it to you. Here is my scrap pile. It's getting pretty thin. You guys that are regular viewers probably recognize a lot of these parts and pieces that are out here. This hitch just happened to come off a 1993 Chevy pickup that I had. I had it for a bunch of years. Well, what I'm doing here is I'm using a set of calipers and I'm just measuring off that quick attach pin back to the uh, metal framework and just marking it out on a piece of cardboard. There. I got my airline hooked up over there. We've definitely got a lot of use out of this uh, this thing lately, haven't we? All right, let's get going. I've got some 5 16 plate and we will fabricate it out of this. So. so the way I started this project is I cut up a template out of a piece of paper, just a shape that I thought would work, and that's kind of what I used and transferred it onto the metal. Now I like using a speed square when I'm using the plasma cutter because the, the height or the thickness of the speed square, as you can kind of see right here, it holds it, the tip of the nozzle of the plasma cutter off the metal just enough so that it's not making contact. You get a little bit of life out of your consumables with doing it that way. And there's my template. I'm just kind of checking everything to make sure everything's fitting the way I want it to fit. And I'm just going along and cutting everything as I go. But using a speed square just does so much better of a cut. And my consumables really need to be changed. You can kind of see uh, the back edge of it here when I break this piece off, how it's just pretty ratty looking. Uh, the the edge that you see that's facing us right now that's really straight, that was kind of like at the beginning. I think I had some new consumables there, but I do end up changing them over again. So, yeah, this plasma cutter is uh, a very nice handy tool to use when you're doing this type of stuff. So here's a little story for you guys. I went out and bought my plasma cutter, paid like 300 bucks for it, and in the interim while I was waiting for it to arrive, I thought I'd do a little research and see what I could find out about it. 
not necessarily this brand but just these uh, Chinese plasma cutters in general and the horror stories that people were saying about how they just got them in the mail and they opened it up out of the box and it burned up or it blew up and it didn't work uh, or shoddy construction or only lasted for a cut and then it burned up and I really was concerned I was pretty nervous that I just you know blew 300 bucks and I'm never gonna you know be able to use it because it's gonna blow up and I'm not gonna be able to get it returned on a warranty well it's been about two years now and I have not experienced any of those negative things that people have experienced in the past and I think the reason for that is is that these uh, cheaper Chinese plasma cutters have kinda of flooded the market but you know they're in business to sell a product and make money and I think they've realized that if they're gonna use you know used parts or inferior electronics that they're gonna blow up and eventually nobody's gonna buy their stuff so they have gotten a lot better uh, you don't see as often that people buy these and they blow up right out of the box but there are those instances for me that has not been my experience at all this thing has been a champ I've had it for about two years now I find that I use it more and more and more because I'm getting more comfortable using it um, way better than a uh, way better than a torch now what I've done here is is I've transferred the first one all, the complete shape after I ground it down I've transferred that shape onto my second piece that I'm cutting so I just wanted to make sure that I had the the full profile this is a good example of how good the cut will be when you have brand new consumables. The cut is just about perfect and it really doesn't even have to be ground or very little grinding. And you can see right there how the tip of the plas plasma cutter is being held off the metal just a little bit when you use that speed square. It's just the right thickness. The one thing that I do notice with this as to compared to say like a real high-end plasma cutter is that you're going to go through uh, consumables a lot quicker with this but the consumables are super cheap so that's kind of a trade-off you guys a little fabrication tip I've marked out the center line of the hitch and on the tractor for this to work we can be no less than 13 and a half inches inside to inside of our metal plates so if we cut this to 13 and a half inches exactly then the inside of our metal plates that we just built will be no less than 13 and a half inches. And then they'll hook onto those pins that are on the tractor. So this measurement right here has to be really accurate and it's got to be square and straight. So one way of measuring this, and it's called burning an inch. So we need to be six and three quarters this way and six and three quarters this way to be 13 and a half inches wide overall. So what you do is to burn an inch is you add an inch to the measurement so if we need it to be six and three quarters we're gonna mark it at seven and three quarters so this seven and three quarters right there and then we mark the inch mark down here okay now the reason we do that is because the end of the blade has some play in that and if this if the end of this uh, hook piece gets bent or anything that'll affect your measurement as well so this is called burning an inch you add an inch to it and mark it at the inch and then you just got to go back and double check it I would always verify it that you're six and three quarters and we are so we're good to go you just have to always be sure that you go back and double check all your measurements when you do that it's really accurate when you do that uh, method of burning an inch but like I said it's easy to get it all screwed up and have the wrong measurement so you know measure it that way but just go back through and verify and double check your measurements how's that saying go measure once cut twice we cut the thing two times it's still too short well here I am um, grinding back the bevels on the metal and that's getting it prepped for the weld and I'm just cutting off the other side and that puts us to the overall width that we need and the portable bandsaw is making short work of this does a real nice job 
A few months ago I created a uh, cutting jig for this to cut 45s and cut straight um, pieces of metal using that jig, but I just haven't had time to get back to it. Uh, I've just been so busy with everything else, but uh, here I am using the speed square, just double checking everything to make sure everything's perpendicular and square to one another. The measurement had to be really accurate within this because the uh, studs that those little hooks hang off from uh, it can only be so wide inside to inside and it can only be so wide outside to outside because the heads have almost like a little mushroom on them so it's pretty tight tolerances now what I did here was uh, just for just for something to do is I use the uh, MIG welder uh, just to tack everything together uh, so I'm tacking it with MIG and then we're gonna finish it out with stick so it looks like we got everything all dialed in here and we're gonna tack it up with MIG and then when we go to stick I'm gonna use a 7018 rod and using the blue demon welder I just love the arc on this thing um, I mean I don't want it to sound like a commercial but I just I like how this blue demon works the the arc force uh, when you start it is just incredible uh, it's, just really smooth, just a really smooth arc. Way, uh, way better than any uh, AC welder I've ever used. So, now I don't really remember what I was using for a setting on this. I think I was around 120. Uh, this welder seems to maybe run just a little bit hot, uh, which that's okay with me. Uh, and I'm also running this on 220. But another great feature for this, you can see I just had to dial it back a little bit. Another great feature for this welder is that it's also uh, can run on 120 volts. So you know it's a dual voltage. So if you know you don't have 220 where you're at, you can uh, just plug it into regular outlet power and still use it. I did a video on that not too long ago and the dis difference between it being on 220 uh, to 120 uh, I could not tell a difference and check out how slick that is. What do you think of that guys? I mean that thing just literally pops on and pops check off. Check that out guys. Not too bad huh? Then the bolt goes, just one bolt goes through an existing bolt on each side just to hold this on there. I took the bolt out right now, but uh, yeah, it's pretty rugged and it doesn't get much easier than that to take it off and on. I'll do it one-handed. There it is. Goes on like this, this easy. And it's on there. So there, let's go make a bagger setup that fits into this. So I've confirmed that the bagger is at a 45 degree angle. So I'm just putting a 45 degree angle on a piece of two by two uh, square tube. And I think that might be like eighth inch wall. And you can see right there, I'm just gonna tack it on with MIG. Initially I was gonna weld it all with MIG, but I can't fit the MIG gun down the side. So I had to use stick there. Now I'm just chipping away all the slag. And there it is. Time to put a hole in it, paint it up, put it on the tractor and see how this thing works. And that's all there is to it guys. I'm all tuckered out from mowing my huge lawn. But I wanna thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you wanna see what I'm doing before it makes it up to YouTube, you guys can catch me on Facebook and on Instagram. Till next week guys, have a good day. See ya.